Hello, my name is Smith Patel with Gladfast Consulting, and today I will be going over a new feature in the New York release of ServiceNow called Remote Tables. For customers with other versions of ServiceNow, you will have to turn this plugin on to use this feature once you upgrade to the New York release. Let's take a quick look on how that is done. To turn on the plugin, navigate to your left nav and type in plugins, and then click to open it. Once it's open, fill free to type in remote tables in the search bar. And since I'm already on the New York release, the plugin is installed for me. But for you, there will be an install button here. You would click that and a pop-up would open that will show you the dependencies that plugin will install, as well as it'll give you an option to load demo data or not. Once you decide if you want demo data, you would check that checkbox and then click install in the pop-up. This will take a few minutes to install because it has its dependencies. So once the plugin is installed, you're ready to start working with remote tables. So how can you use remote tables? Remote tables allow you to define a table within ServiceNow and connect it to an external data source. ServiceNow then gets the external data source records from running an associated script against the external data source to populate your remote table. In order to create the associated scripts, being familiar with REST or SOAP services will be helpful in allowing you to pull the data from the external sources. These records which you pulled from the external sources live in memory, which means they are purged after you leave the list or form of the remote tables. There's an option which you could define to cache the data in memory for a set period of time. For example, if you wish to keep the data for five minutes, you would put 300 seconds as the cache TTL. We'll go over this later in this video. You can manipulate the external data in lists or forms and process it with standard Glide scripts. You can also group, sort, aggregate, and filter the data, just like you would for standard internal tables. So let's dive right into it with an example. You create a remote table the same way you would create a standard internal table. You define columns and controls and designate application access for it, just like you would do for an internal table. To get to the remote tables module, type in remote table in the left nav. Here you will see tables and definitions, so click on tables. But if you choose to install demo data, you will see these other tables in the tables list. For our use, I created a new table called currency. So let's go ahead and create a new table. To do that, you click the new button. Once you're inside the record, you will see some warnings and notifications asking you to follow ServiceNow's new subscription model. So since this is just a demo, we will ignore them for now. So let's populate the table test. And as you see, the name automatically gets filled in, just like how it would for an internal table. And we'll click Submit. This returns you to the tables list. To view which fields get created, click on your table. So we'll go into test two. And as you see, the only field that gets created by default is the sysid field. If it was an internal table, you would see more fields, for example, created by, updated by, and so forth. The other difference between a remote table and an internal table is this checkbox here. For remote tables, it will always be checked in. So let's go to the currency table that I had created for this video. Here you can see some additional fields which I've created, which will be populated by our associated script. So what are these associated scripts? This is a script used to retrieve external data and store it as cache for your remote table. Every time you refresh a list that contains the external data from a remote table, the associated script runs again. So this is why one key thing to note is that all the data that is retrieved from the external source lives in the memory. So make sure that your data set is small. To minimize query times, don't add more than 1,000 rows to a remote table at a time. Our associated scripts are stored under definitions. I have demo data installed, so I will have some additional scripts in my list. To go to that, uh, type in remote tables again and go to definitions. These are the associated scripts. Since I had the demo data, I have these scripts right here. And I had created the get currency rate script. To create your own script, you would click on new. And a key thing to note that is with this scripts, you could only have one active script with one remote table. So for example, if I try to associate, I'll see this test to, to my currency table, 
it will throw an error since I already have an active associated script with my currency table. In this script, what I'm doing is I'm creating a new get rest message and going to the fixer API to get currency con uh, conversion data and storing it in my remote table. If your data for some reason does not show up in your remote table once you're done with the script, please debug your scripts using gs.debug. Since currency conversion rates change often, this would be a good use of the remote tables if your company for some reason has that functionality needed. Uh, advanced checkbox lets you see this caching tab. This is where you set the cache TTL that we talked earlier in this video. By default, this is set to zero. But if you wanted to, let's say, um, keep your data in your table for five minutes, you would just put 300 seconds and save the record. Let's go back to our currency table. So if I refresh this, you see that I have my base currency, my date, my historical data, and my rates populated. So that's what the script does. Every time I refresh this, it will go ahead and run the script and populate my data. By now, you may think, okay, well, if remote tables use integration hub subscriptions, then why not just use the integration hub? So one key difference is if you want to simply have temporary external data, you could just easily uh, create a remote table instead of going through the integration hub. But if you want more advanced importing and transformation options, including you know, maybe using Flow Designer, or if you want to develop custom integrations, then you would go ahead and use integration hub. So there you have it, folks, the ins and outs of remote tables. Thank you for watching, and feel free to browse our channel for more videos. Until next time, have a great day.